Oh, oh, is it going? You going? Oh, hey there, YouTube. What? Are you going right now? You're ahoy there, ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another live stream, a very special one, where I'm going to be talking about my top 93 games of 2020 and the year yet that it was. Before we get into this, I do want to mention that I played every single game that came out in 2020 at least four times at every single player count. So this is the definitive list, and if anyone says otherwise, they are wrong, and you should probably cut them out of their life. Uh, no, uh, obviously I only got a chance to play 93 new games this year. And I say only, uh, but I got a chance to play 93 new games this year. And I'm going to categorize them into these categories right here, which are great games. And I am going to rank them. So eventually we will have some award winners. We will have the best game of the year, AKA my favorite and the worst game of the year and potentially any other categories that any of you mention in the chat. And I was hoping to open that up. So if you have any weird ideas for potential award winners, I'll see if I can figure out which is the best at that and without further ado uh let's talk about them so we got great we got good we got meh uh, and then we have forgettable and there's gonna be quite a few forgettable where i'll say yes this was a game i played this i made a video for this and i don't remember this at all and i put that underneath meh because if a game is that forgettable it's just gonna be a hard one to recommend in my personal opinion also let me know if the stream quality is looking good sounding clear all that good stuff uh then we have the bad and this is obviously i know someone immediately their hair is caught on fire because i said games aren't bad your opinion is that it's bad and yes this is a tailing that my opinion of the game is bad and then we have the award winner so let's just i'm just gonna grab one at a time we're gonna see what it is first one is aunt agatha's attic now this was a game that was at target it came in a box it looked like this it it was blue and it was very forgettable <laughs> I, I made a i made a skip the rules on it i think i might have did a, a, a game night video on it but i don't think it was one it's in the kill closet right now that's pretty much all you need to know about it it was forgettable unfortunately aunt agatha's attic is not going to be my game of the year continuing on we will go to fish club yes let's go to fish club this is a blue orange games one this is for very young children my kids really enjoyed this one i actually shot a video with them teaching how to play the game you essentially drop the fish into like this this really cool 3d fish bowl that uh, you can see through and you're trying to get five of them in a row it's kind of a connect four uh and i'd say it's good i think it's say it's a very good children's family game i almost want to go great i almost want to go great on the children's game but i'm gonna say they're very very good and you'll immediately notice that my taste in games is going to be just wildly different you are going to see adult party games wildly inappropriate uh inappropriate games uh you're gonna see family stuff you're gonna see epic stuff because next let's get to exchange this one so this is a very odd game this is one that was released by bicycle games the people who make like the card deck and they did two games this year they did the exchange and they did uh the alpha which was like this really cool one actually where you're hunting dogs but we'll talk about that a little bit later uh you're hunting <laughs> as dogs not you're hunting dogs uh but this one was the exchange was kind of meh if i recall it was in the good category i think it was good to meh uh but i don't really remember much about it so i'm gonna go with the meh because if it was good i would remember about it right i feel like that's in my line of thinking it's gonna go there all right we're going right here next oh gosh Ooh, we got rare roses so rare roses uh, so this is one of the, one of, this is one of the difficult things. One of the, one of the odd things. Hey Van, what's up? Uh, this is one of the odd things about doing reviews is sometimes you get the earliest reviews out. And when you get a really negative early review out, it's just like that. Oh, it's just such a weird feeling, especially with a Kickstarter, because you immediately have massive backlash from Kickstarter backers. Uh, many of who, who, who have not actually played the game yet, but are just like, no, this is my thing that I love. And I believe what's going to be good. You don't tell me it's bad. Um, and then sometimes, sometimes you're vindicated though. Uh, and this is one of those times rare roses was released and I thought it was bad. I did not enjoy it. I played it with my game night, with both my game nights, and we all, no one liked this game at all. No one wanted this game at all. And actually, shortly after the review was posted, it was a very negative review, um, uh, shortly after it was posted, they actually did an errata to the rules uh, to, to, to tweak with one of the, 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 the cons that I had said in the thing. Now, I don't know if that is coincidental or not, but, um, yeah, it was not a game that I, that I wanted to revisit, and I accidentally snapped the board in half when I was making a, uh, skit with it. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, next we have Last Defense. This is a really cool 20-minute game. It lasts exactly 20 minutes. It's ran by an app. Family weight game. It's immediately in the good category. Ah, uh, hmm. 
I've only played it twice now. I did a Bower Family Learns on it with my son. My son absolutely loves it, and he wants to play it. And he consistently brings like, hey, we got about 20 minutes. Maybe we can play Last Defense, Dad. And I was like, well, buddy, I'm working right now. I, I'm going to play that with him tomorrow. And he wants to play it so bad. You know what? I'm going to go with great. I'm going to go with great because I'm looking at this from my perspective. And my perspective, I know this is a game that I'm going to be able to play with my oldest son for many, many times because he's very, very excited to play with it. He's very excited to teach my wife how to play it. And my youngest son is also then going to love it as well. So I'm going to put it in the great category. But I think it's I think it's to the right side of the great category. That's not that's not going to be my game of the year. I guarantee you that. Next we have Faza. So Faza was a cooperative game in which you were to, it had like a really cool 1950s art style. And you were moving around the board and you had to defeat these big monsters that would um, move around the board, these robot alien things and it was pre-programmed and it was pretty cool and I enjoyed it. And I thought it was good. Um, the people I played it with leaned more towards meh. And I'm going to be brutally honest about everything here. You're, you're going to hear my brutal honest opinion about every single game from last year. Uh, so stay tuned. But uh, for me personally, I'm going to go with good. But I think if, I, if you pulled the people that I played it with my game group, they would probably go towards meh. But then again, I think it's more of a game that I enjoy because I really do enjoy cooperative games a good deal. Next, we're going to have... King, uh, let's go with Kingswood. Kingswood. Oh my gosh. This is my best family game of last year. It's uh, one of the best children's games that I've ever played. <clears throat> Period. So it's immediately going into the great category. This is the game. This is game of the year potential award winner stuff here. If you have kids between the age of four to ten, you need to get Kingswood. Just period. Uh, it's from, I think, 25th Century Games. It is absolutely outstanding as a family weight game. Uh, and it's actually causing me to potentially uh, consider like uh, getting like a seal a crest that you could put potentially game companies could put on their game that is just like these are games that I personally recommend as great solo games for kids because I think that is a, a really awesome market that could potentially be tapped because you know if you have kids and you play a lot of hobby games your kids are excited to get to those games one day they really are and, and giving them a taste of that with solo games uh, is just something I love so Kingswood high up on my list it's on the great category right there next we're gonna go with Marvel Villainous now first Full disclosure here, I'm not the biggest fan of Villainous. I've never gotten it. Uh, it's one of those games where every time I play it, I'm like, yeah, that was fun. But I feel like everybody else had more fun than me. I feel the same way about like Chronicles of Crime and a couple other games like that where I like the game, but I feel like I should be having more fun with the game. It was not forgettable. It was, it was kind of meh to me, to be honest with you. And I know somebody's like, what? Why well, shaking their fist? But it's kind of meh to me. You know, Villainous, I'll play it every time. You know, I, I can't go mad. I gotta go good. I gotta go good. That's fair. That's fair. It's good. It's a good game. It's just, eh. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I just said eh. I just said eh. It's gotta go meh. Well, I didn't say meh. I said eh. I feel like meh has a negative tone. Moving on. We're stuck. It's there. Uh, next, we're gonna go Glass Alibi. And yes, this artwork is really weird. So this is a tuck box. This is a weird little tuck box. It's a storytelling game. We did a Bauer Fair. Uh, we did a, a Game Night Plays of it, which I'd love to do some more Game Night Plays videos. Um... But not everybody's comfortable with that sort of thing. And I thought it was good. I didn't think it was good. I'd rather play over Marvel Villainous. I'd rather play it over Faza. And comparing it to Fish Club is very difficult because Fish Club is a children's game. Uh, but yes, I'm going to put Glass Saddle by there. It was a very fun game. We enjoyed it a good deal. But you have to have a storytelling crowd. It's essential to have to play that game. So... Next thing we got, we got Dominion Menagerie. So this is the new expansion to Dominion. Yeah, you might not have known it popped out, uh, but it did. It was in the middle of the year. It was a thing, and it was fun. I got it for uh, anniversary, birthday, Christmas. I got it for some sort of, uh, it was a gift from my son, and it was good. You know, it, it's <clears throat> it introduces these events, which is which are cool, and then this other thing that you can kind of purchase, or like actions. And, and it adds an extra layer that I don't want from a Dominion expansion. I'll say that. Because when I play Dominion, what I want from a Dominion expansion at this point is I don't want to learn anything new except for read the text on the card. I just want cards that do different stuff so I can be like, oh, cool, that does different stuff. And how is that going to sync with card over here and card over there? And oh, that's how is that going to sync with some of my favorite cards? You know, that's what I want. To, I don't want to have to learn new stuff. You know, <laughs> so well, I did like it. I do like the cards. It's not great, which stinks, because I would love to put Dominion in the great category, because it's one of my all-time favorite games, but nope, not this year. Next we have, uh, By the Vote. So, this one, this was a Kickstarter game, 
and it was exactly fifteen minutes, and it, and it was it was it was it was uh, it was it was okay, it was okay, okay to good. I played it with both my game nights. I think I got this played three or four times because it was so short. But it just it was very swingy. Essentially, it's just this bidding game where you bid on the different states. Uh, but it had like this take that element because if you won certain swing states, you get to take other people's things. So it kind of messed with the bidding because it'd be like, yeah, I want to bid big for California because it's going to give me, you know, 55 delegates. But then there's like six cards in the game that just like as soon as you bid that card, it's like, oh, you just steal California. So there's no point to bidding a California. And, and you'd say, oh, but that, that adds an additional crinkle to the bidding as well. And I say, eh, meh. I say meh. That's what I say. I'm going to put by the vote as meh. But I still, you know what? I'd rather play exchange. I'd rather play exchange. I think I like the exchange a little bit better. But by the vote's 15 minutes. All right, next we got, ooh, Four Glory, Game of the Year candidate. Ooh, here we go. All the way to the top. Move way, move way. Uh, Four Glory is a spectacular two-player deck building game that is half part deck building uh, with some really intriguing deck building because there's actually three different buy sections you can buy from. And each of those different sections has, uh, one has gladiators that have their own asymmetric ability. And then one are like the people that sit in your crowds and like pay you money to run the whole shebang. And they each have their own special ability and they can like attack gladiators or heal gladiators and do different things like that. Because the, there's a, after you deck build, there's a gladiator phase. And the gladiator phase is really stinking fun. Like I would just play the gladiator phase. It's his own separate game. Uh, really stinking cool. But is it better than Kingswood? And I gotta say, no. No, I'm gonna go with no, because Kingswood, I still think, is one of the best children's games I've ever played. I can't, I can't, I can't say enough about Kingswood. And the more I play it, the more I enjoy it. I probably play it like eight times now. My kids are in, insanely in love with it. Next we have Meeple Land. Meeple Land. Oh, this is a game where you're going to be building an amusement park. It came out from Blue Arch Games, and it was, it was good. It was good. I'd rather play it than Villainous. I'd rather play it than Faza. I'd rather play it than Glass Alibi. That's as far as I'll go. It, it was good. I, I'm going to play it. I played it with my son, and I played it only once. There you go. Letting you know that. Uh, but I want to play it with either one of my game nights and really get their opinion and play it with some adults. Uh, so it could potentially go slightly higher, but I don't think it'd go. And it's not going to go to the greater than that, I don't think. It was good. If you can find it on a deal, if it was like a bargain bin thing, go for it. Uh, next, we're going to go with, uh, we're gonna go with uh, GPS. GPS. So this was part of a Kickstarter. My buddy Brandon back. He's my. He's my. This is the one time of the week I get out of the house. Pretty much at home every day, uh, except for Thursday. I get out of the house to go to a, my friend's break, game night, and he backed this GPS Sequoia and Mountain Goats. It was a three pack from I think uh, TabletopGames.com. They make games as well. They make the bags. They make a whole bunch of stuff, and they made three filler weight games. Uh, and I will say, one of them did not like. One of them was good, and then one of them was great. This was not... I'm going to put this in the bad category. And the main reason why this is bad is there's a couple things. It does go ahead of Rare Roses, though. Rare Roses is still my least favorite game so far this year. But uh, with GPS, there's, like, it's a spinner. <laughs> you construct a spinner, and then you spin. And where you spin is where you're going to place, like, a token. And then these tokens, uh, you're just trying to get the tokens in numerical order. And it, it, was, it was a fun idea... And, and, I, and I, I came into it with a very positive attitude. I played with my friend Brandon. He was like, this game sucks. This game sucks. You're going you're gonna to hate this. It's terrible. And I actually ended up liking it enough that I'm going to try and play with my kids. Uh, but uh, it, the, the main issue with it is it's a spinner game. And if, if you spin too hard, it's just like everything just wrecks and goes all over the place. And you're like, oh, I don't remember what this was. And it, it's, it's just, it shouldn't be a spinner game as cool. The gimmick does not work. It is a gimmick game, a gimmick filler game, and the gimmick does not work. And, and, and therefore, I thought it was bad. And I came into it wanting to like it. And I still hope I can because it's great for kids to learn numbers. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, next we got... P for Pizza. Yeah, so this was a really simple game. Um, it was like a fast-paced trivia-esque game where essentially there were going to be uh, three questions or three letters on the inside. You had to answer questions, but with specific letters. You see what I'm saying? So you'd be like, oh, the letter is P, and the question is uh, anything that's currency. And you'd go, oh, you go, Penny, and yeah, you get it. Uh, but this one, actually, you're constructing a pizza in front of you when you win cards. And as it was a cool little nifty game, it feels like a party game, but it doesn't play that many players, which is unfortunate. I don't think it plays that many players. Maybe it does. I don't remember. It's almost in the forgettable category, but it's good. I enjoyed it, and I kept it. Uh, and I would actually put it... You know what? I'm going to put it all the way up here. I'd rather play it than Dominion, because I had a, I had a good deal of fun with it. I think I played it three times. P 
Heater Pizza. It's like this small. Definitely recommend that one. It's fun. Check it out. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We're going to go with Chronicles of Crime 1400. This was an expansion to Chronicles of Crime, which, once again, I did uh, I did a kick, one of the Kickstarter videos for it when it first came out, and I really, really liked it, and I thought it was great. And then the more I played Chronicles of Crime, slightly less <clears throat> each and every time I like it, a little bit less. And I don't know why. I still like the game. And I still think it's good. I still think it's very good. I almost think it's great. And here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to put it in the good category. I'm going to put it right here behind P for Pizza. Because I still... Eh, maybe behind Dominion. Yeah, there we go. Because <clears throat> I still think it's very good. And I think most people would put it in the great category. So I do want to specify that. So, but yeah, I just... Um, I don't know. It's just slowly starting to wear on me. I think it's just... I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I still think it's good, though. All right, next we have <coughs> Don't Let It Die. This was a really interesting cooperative game where there was essentially the first people who found fire. There was lightning that struck and fire. There was a bush there, and now your job is to try and keep the fire going, and you have to go out and you have to hunt animals. It's a really cool game. I think it's a very good game. I think it's, it's going to be one of my top good games. And they're coming out with an expansion later this year that I think will bump it into the great category. Uh, if you were talking to my seven-year-old son, this would be in the great category, and this would be towards the top. <laughs> That's how much he likes it. Uh, so, and, I, and I'm going to try and mention little things like that, because maybe you have kids, and, and maybe that uh, that does that. And I also like to mention what my game group thinks about it as well, because I feel like that's a good barometer, too. Like, if I say this is crazy, you know, it's like, this game was amazing, but the seven people I played it with freaking hated it. <laughs> you know, that's pretty valuable information to put in there. Uh, then we're going to go with this one. This is uh, Lucky Luau. This was a, a Kickstarter one I did, and it was uh, it was either forgettable or meh. Um, yeah, it was forgettable. I don't remember. I think you were making patterns. And I think I'd rather play Aunt Attica's Attic. Just because there's a Skip the Rules video on it, you should check out. I did that. <laughs> uh, so what do we got next? We got Lots. Oh, yeah, this is a great one. Uh, so Lots is, yeah, this is great. This is in the great category. We're not, we're bumping way past good to great. This is a little stacking game, and actually I like this one better than the Last Defense, personally. Special abilities. And, and if you have kids between the age of 5 and, say, 13, you should check out Lots. Very, very cool. Designers are awesome, dude, as well. All right, what do we got next? We got uh, Smirkle. Uh, this, one's a, this one's a big... Uh, I don't want to go bad, because I don't feel like it's fair to say bad. Because I played one game of it, and it was bad. It was a bad, bad game that we played of that. And the rules were god-awful confusing. It, it, because it, I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating. Like, I grabbed the game, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I could grab the game, but there were just all sorts of crazy terms. Like, if you roll three sixes, it's a chicken wing slapper. But then if you get the extra six on the wild side, you get the four cloak lifter. And it's like, they used all this terminology, which just muddied the waters. And there was like... Uh, and, and they sent it out like it was a review copy, but then it turned out it was actually supposed to be for a Kickstarter, which, by the way, that's not cool. Tell me if it's a Kickstarter, because if I would have posted an honest review of that, they would have been so mad. and be like, well, you, that's why you don't do that, homie. Yeah, I'm going to go with, you know, I'm going to go with tentative bad, because it's not forgettable. It's not forgettable, and it wasn't mad. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go with mad. I'm going to go with mad, because I'll be honest with you, the gameplay itself was fun. The gameplay itself was very fun, and I, I see it being like the kind... Hey, what's up, Ronnie? I see it being like the kind of game that if you played it on a regular basis, like with your family, could be a really super fun game. So I'm going to put it in the meh instead of the bad. I feel like playing board games at your house was a lifetime ago. It takes me back seeing you so jazzed about all these games. Yeah, still as passionate. Uh, next we got Maracas. So this one... Very interesting one right here, uh, because it's, no, it's not going in the great. I think it's going in the, towards the end of the good. So this is a really simple, like, fan, you know what, I'm going to put it a little bit higher. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a <laughs> villainous. I'm going to piss, piss some people off. Uh, uh, but Maracas, it's just this game where you shake this maraca, and you try and guess how many uh, shells are inside the maraca, and you pass it around. It's a really fun, it's a kid's game. It's a young children's game. I think it's a good young children's game, and I would rather play it than Villainous, because Maracas lasts about five minutes. And uh, Villainous lasts forever if you have a high player count. So, what do we have next? I can't even see what this one is. Oh, Gloomhaven! Oh, wow. 
That's a big one. Jaws of the Lion. That's a big dog. Where's the big dog going? Where's the big dog going? Is it going to great? I think it's going to great. Rather play it than last defense. Rather play it than lots. I would rather play it than for glory. And I would rather play it than Kingswood. This is my own personal list. I'm taking aside my son's feelings on game and my kid's feelings on games. And I'm putting Gloomhaven right there. Draw the line right now is my current game of the year as of now, but it could be dethroned later on. Uh, because I honestly didn't think it was going to go that high, but every time we get a chance to play this, it gets me so excited. But unfortunately, COVID has screwed that up massively so that we can never get that perfect uh, four-player game group that we had so we can go deeper into our journey. And God, I want Gloomhaven. I want to play So yes... You know what? Gloomhaven, you got me, Isaac. You got me. Fun fact about Gloomhaven, one of the worst decisions Bowers Game Corner ever made was turning down a prototype of Gloomhaven. Yeah! Go me! Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was something fell through at Gen Con. And I remember talking to him, he's like, yeah, I got this. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, I had already had, like, I picked up, like, 80 games at Gen Con, review copies, and it was just like, I don't know if I can handle this kind of massive game. And little did I know, yeah! So many poor decisions on Bowers Game Corner. All right. Anywho, Falling Skies, Under Falling Skies. This is a really cool solo game from uh, CGE. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I thought it was great. <clears throat> that was a great solo game. I'm going to go right there. Under Falling Skies was one of my favorite games of the year. It's a solo game that I see myself keeping for a very long time. I liked the core mechanisms, but I will say as a legacy-esque game, which it kind of, not legacy, but like a, a chapter game where you play through the story, the story was very lacking. The story... And the reason why they did that was because they wanted to give you as much variability as possible. And there's an insane amount of variability in that game. <clears throat> However... Just, it, it didn't have a good story, and I wish it would have had a good story. So, I'm going to put it right there instead of further over. So, next we have Sweet Existence. The uh, This is the board game, that the party game that is based off the popular web comic. And it was, um, <clears throat> it was meh. I mean, it was okay. You know, I didn't, it was, it was all about trying to play cards at the right time to, like, get your aliens to match up the thing, and it was, it, it was forgettable. I... <laughs> You know what? It was, it was, no, I'll remember it because it did have some fun artwork. You know what? I will, I'm going to bump it up to meh because I did have fun looking at all the different artwork because it, the, the artwork is designed by the, uh, the dude that did the artwork and there's a whole bunch of it. Next, we're going to go with Fiera Ben. Now, this is a really interesting one. This is the next one from Friedman Freeze and this is a worker placement game where you're actually trying to fight for your right to have like uh, better wages and work less hours and get equal pay for the sexes and uh, you know you can get girlfriends in this game and you can go to hotels and make love and you can go jogging and it's a Friedman Freeze game and it's great. It's great and honestly it's one of my favorite games of the year. I'd rather play it than For Glory. I'd rather play it than Kingswood. I'm not putting it above Gloomhaven. Very, very fun game. And a fun solo version as well. Definitely recommend you check out Fiera Bend. Put that one on your radar. Very cool game. All right, what do we got next? We have uh, this one. This was, uh, oh, what's the name of it? Rose Ceremony. Yeah, it's one from Blue Orange Games. It was good. It's good. It's towards the end of the gun. Very forgettable. Ooh. <clears throat> See, forgettable is an interesting one. Because... No, it was good, because it was a good game, but it was forgettable. Yeah, I'm going forgettable. I'm going to go on top of forgettable, because it was good. It was fun. But it, it just, it was a game that, uh, you know, it was about just, oh, you got to get the certain number, or a higher number, or odd numbers, and it was just, it was very plain. Like, it was one of those games where I played it, and I was like, oh. Zero passion or enthusiasm was really put into this game. <clears throat> In fact, it was originally called Valentine's Day, but then they changed the name. Potentially because it would be very hard to find the Valentine's Day board game when you type Valentine's Day because there'd be a billion things that pop up. All right. Next, we got the Alpha. This is what I was talking about earlier. That was from uh, Bicycle Games as well. It's better than Exchange, and I think it's a good game. I think it was fun. And I'd rather play it than Chronicles of Crime. I would not rather play it than any of these games, though. So slot it right there. It was a good game. Worth a, worth, worth a bargain bin price if you're a family gamer. If you're a family gamer, I think. All right, what do we got? Stories. <clears throat> this one was a really interesting game. Small talk box, essentially telling stories, but the, the, the story behind the, the guy that created the game was actually kind of fascinating because he had, like, found out he was going to die, 
and so <clears throat> he, you know, he went to a therapist or something, and, and he, the therapist was like, you should chase your dreams or whatever. And so he came up with like these five dreams he was going to chase, and one of them was making a board game. And it was actually a really fascinating backstory. And he, he was one of my first Fiverr backers to have me do a video, and, and I thought the game was very good. It was a, it was a good storytelling game, and I liked it. And I think it's slotted, uh, yeah, it's slotted right there. Bump out, Alpha. Not for everybody, though. All right, what do we got next? <clears throat> Pandemic Hot Zone. I forgot. I forgot this came out this year. Uh, yeah, I got a chance to play this early last year at conventions, which feel like forever ago. It was really fun, and I liked it a lot. I think we played it twice, and <clears throat> I'm going to go with great. I actually really, really like that game, and I would like to own it. And I think I would play a lot of it with my kids, and I'm going to slot it. That's pretty high, yeah. We're going Pandemic Hot Zone. I forgot, honestly, how much I enjoyed Pandemic Hot Zone. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to get my hands on that one. All right, next we got Fight Your Friends. This one was a head-to-head uh, -head combat dueling game. It had numbers. The big, the, I feel like the main reason that the game was even made... Oh, I'm out of water. My throat's getting dry. This is bad. I feel like the main reason the game was made uh, was because... Or why it got made. Let me rephrase this. Was because it had like a million... It had like 56 different illustrations from different like really small indie comics so it's just like they were like all right if we get enough of these really small fan bases excited we can make this game it that's just kind of what it felt like and i thought it was good but it ultimately was really forgettable so you know what i feel like that's what's gonna happen i feel like we're getting too many games in the good so what's gonna start happening is i'm gonna start bumping games down from good to forgettable because if you're forgettable you know that, that's that's on that's that's a sin that's unsavable all right, what do we got next? We got the Secret Neighbor card game. Okay, so this one has been really hard for me to play with the pandemic because it is uh, a, a social deduction, a, a you know a larger group. I think it goes up to like eight players or something like that. Not a hugely large group. Uh, social deduction game. It tries to be like a kind of a quasi version of Werewolf, but you can like make inventions and you're, it's a really interesting game. I thought it was good. People I played it with would lean towards Matt. I do want to mention that. I played this with five people. <laughs> I thought it was good. I'm going to slap it right there above the alpha. I think it was... No, I'm going to slap it right there. You know what? I, I really did enjoy that game. I thought it was really unique, and I think it would be spectacular at a 13-year-old's birthday party, and that's the best... That is my ringing endorsement. I think if you were like... If anyone in the future of time says, what board game or what card game would be fun at a 13-year-old's birthday party, I would say Secret Neighbor Card Game, because I feel like that fits it perfectly. Hey, what's up, Grant? Uh, so, Secret Neighbor Card Game, right there, but I will say the people I played it with would, would slot it in the meh. So take that for what it is. MTV Card Game. Now, this is a very interesting one as well. I'm bumping this into the great. I had so much stinking fun with this game. Uh, I felt like an absolute, uh, titan when I played the MTV music game because I have, like, a crazy memory for music. I always have, and, and I, I just absolutely adore music. But... If you don't absolutely adore music, I think that this is probably going to be in the good to mad category. Because some of the people I played it with, some of the people that like music were like, yeah, that was good, that was fun. Uh, you, you need the right crowd to play it with. But some of the people who did like music were like, I, I don't want to play that again. <laughs> so you got to have the right crowd for that. But if you do, and you're a big music buff, for, like me, great. I really enjoyed the MTV music game. Next, we got Pig Puzzle. Now, this is a solo children's game. Once again, we talked a little bit earlier. Uh, that, that is a concept that I think is a hugely awesome one to potentially be tapped. This was a good game. Both my sons had fun playing it. My four-year-old figured out how to play it. He actually shot a video on how to play it. I'm going to post it eventually. I don't know how to title that one. Uh, he tried to talk to the camera, and it just went kind of awry. But I'm going to, you know, it was good. I, I, had, I enjoyed it. You know, I tried it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> I'll put it right there. I don't know. Pig Puzzle is a hard one to do because obviously I, I need to ask my kids because it's aimed at them, completely aimed at them. Cross Clues, we got a Game of the Year candidate right here. If you've not heard of Cross Clues, it is absolutely spectacular. It is uh, code names, but without all the stress. It's completely cooperative, and it's my current Game of the Year. <laughs> you know what? I would rather play Code Names over Gloomhaven because, in the same time, I could play Gloomhaven. I could play like eight games of Cross Clues. What program are you using for that for us? It is TierMaker.com. I just found it today, and I like it a good deal so far. Uh, so, but right now, Cross Clues 
my favorite game of the year. So, oh, but yeah, it ta so what it does is it, it makes it so you have this uh, these columns. So over here you would have four words like, uh, so this would be blue, and then over here you have you know, four words as well. And then, so you'd be like, A3 would be right here, and you try to connect, uh, if you play the game medium, you try to connect this word and that word, and you make, a, you say, oh, uh, ocean, and then it would be like blue and big, and people would be like, oh, blue and big, it's ocean, A3, and then you put it there, and everybody's cool. But what's great about the game is, uh, you take, you, there's no taking turns. So, Essentially, you know, like when you play code names, it's incredibly stressful coming up with those clues. It really is sometimes. This takes the pressure off because everybody's trying to think of them at the same time. There's no pressure on anyone else. And it's a game I'm going to have in my collection for freaking ever. Spectacular. Next, we got Title Blades. Title Blades, big dog. We had it set up, took up the whole stinking table, and it was good. It was good. I don't think it was great. It, it was a lot. It was a lot. And I... I want to... You know what? I'm going to put it at the bottom of great. Because I actually did think it was great. I was higher on it than the people I played it with. Who, who would rank it in the good. <laughs> My buddy Brandon's got some buyer's remorse right now. He's like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to the table again. Uh, but I, I thought it was great. And I really did like it a good deal. Just got here. What games was he just talking about that he's going to keep forever? Cross Clues. Game of the year. $15 uh, for Blue Orange Games. Definitely check it out. It's a great game. What do we got next? We got Muffin Time. So this raised a... <laughs> so uh, Big Potato Games and I have a great relationship. They're awesome people. And they released Muffin Time. And they're like, all right, they sent it to me. And I was like, okay, what is this? It's a really silly card game where you're trying to get exactly 10 cards in your hand. And there's just insane things you do. It's just a bizarre game. It's it's just like if they just said, all right, we, we want to capture the craziness of a meme and put it into a game because it's about muffins. It, it was It's fun. It's good. I enjoyed it. My seven-year-old loved it. And I would rather play it than Dominion because it's, it's brainless. And I liked it. Actually, you know what? I liked it even more than that. But it raised a million dollars on Kickstarter. I have no idea how that game raised a million dollars on Kickstarter. But good for them. That's the last of the water, folks. That's going to be a hard one. All right. Got I got Can I use less saliva somehow? Christmas Rush. This is like a, a, a war game. It was actually a really cool, like, oh, Spoons. Sorry, not Spoons. I'm thinking of the other game. This is a Spoons-like game, but instead, uh, with what it adds different is you have to, like, sing Christmas carols uh, or go, like, bah, humbug when you when you discard a certain card. And it essentially just adds some Christmassy stuff to Spoons. And you know what? I'm being honest here. This is my list. I thought it was a great game. I had fun with it, and I'd rather play Christmas Rush over Tidal Blades. I'd rather play it over Last Defense. I'd rather play it over Falling Skies. And that's where I'll stop with it. Christmas Rush is currently in my top 10 games. Uh, I don't think Tom Bass was going to have that one. Oh, oh, oh Ronnie could bring some water. That'd be great. Uh, continuing on, we got Incoherent Family. All right. So, uh, if you never play Incoherent Family, this is a game where essentially you have a double-sided card, and on one side it has this weird text like, THE BUS CARPERS. And then on the other side, it has actually what the bus is supposed to be, which of course is, you know, hooked on phonics or whatever the phrase may be. And this is a family edition because I guess there's like an adult edition. And it was fun. We had a good time with it. I'd rather play it than Villainous and Maracas and Faza and Glass Alibi and Maple Land. Wow. Okay. I liked it more than I thought I did. And <laughs> Chronicles of Crime and the stories and Big Puzzle. What the hell? Slow down. Yeah, right there. Shut your mouth. Dominion's taking a drum and is slapping you down. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy the game more than I thought I did. Cool. I'm going to keep it. All right. Next we have Animix. This is an incredibly forgettable game. And I want to re-slot the end. No, it's the worst of the forgettable games. I'm not going to put it in bad. It just felt heartless and soulless. It's just about... It had, like, a really interesting mechanism where you could change the board, which is just, it's not actually a board, it's just a, uh, grids of cards, and you could change these grids of cards, and then the grid would dictate the scoring. So your option was either to mess with how many points are going to be scored, or to put cards down there so you could score more points, and it was just, it was just there, you know? <sighs> no one I played it with liked it. No one I played with wanted with. It's, it's in the kill closet now. It's very forgettable. And in three years, we've up Animex. I'll have no idea what you're talking about. 
Same with Mon Martyr. <laughs> I would have put that there too, but that one's above it. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of that one. It, I, did, I don't remember why. So there you go. I know we did a video on it, so I did my job. All right, next we got Exit the Stormy Flight. Me and my wife did this, and we said it were bad. We didn't like it. We didn't have fun. I think we gave it like a three. When I got this image, I was like, dang, we rated that a three. I don't know why we rated it a three, but we really did not like it. So, boom, bad. Uh, but I'm going to put it above Rare Roses and above GPS. It's the best of the bad because I still, I still got to spend... An hour and a half with someone I care about, someone I love, and now we have an experience that we can say, oh, you remember we did that one? It was so bad. Like, eh, it, can be like it, it can be a combined experience, so it definitely is the best of the bad for me. Now, the worst of the bad, and this, who, Valhalla Llamas. This is what my buddy Brandon bought. He had immediate buyer's remorse, and it's one of the worst games I've ever played. It was so boring and dull and lifeless, and... I'm going to put it below Rare Roses, because at least with Rare Roses, I remember enjoying the beginning of the game and feeling like, oh man, this could be cool, this has some neat mechanisms. But when I saw Valhalamas, we dealt out the cards, and I started seeing the cards, I was just like, oh god, oh, this is going to be bad. And it was, it was bad, it was really bad. Just don't, don't ever, don't ever. Uh, I don't ever want to play it again. And it was my worst game of the year so far. I don't have anything that's going to beat that. That might be an award winner. I need to wash out my mouth with a game I absolutely loved. So let's talk the crew. And I know this is 2019, it's not 2020, I don't care. In some instances, there's games here that say they're supposed to be 2019, but they came out in like December 27th. I'm putting them here. I looked at when the majority of the uh, content creator videos hit for each game, non-Kickstarter video, and that's when I dictated the year that it came out. And also, just to make things interesting, I took some games that were listed as 2020 that I know for a fact are not 2020, but I've got the chance to play, and I put them in here as well. The crew goes above cross clues for me uh and i'm sure you've heard enough praise about the crew i will pile on to it i have enjoyed every single game i play of the crew i love the stressful feeling i love how the game can make me feel like an absolute freaking moron every single time and, and i love that i love that i love a game i love when a game can give me such a strong sense of emotions in one way or another i love the crew and it might be my game of the year next we have ooh, the game of life Mixed with trouble. So this is life trouble mashup, and this was a bad game. Yes, indeed. Haha, ha. people who stick to the released in year forgot that the rest of the world. Yes, exactly. It's so hard, especially with SN games and all that sort of thing. So it's just, yeah, just forget it. I, I went by what I thought would be most interesting in the games I played. Life and Trouble. So this was a game I specifically sought. I, I bought at Target because I'm doing this experiment right now where uh, I buy brand new games at Target that no one has any YouTube videos out, and I put YouTube videos out on them, and I'm just going to see if they do, how well they do. If that's a viable thing that I should be doing to grow my channel, both financially. Because I did one on the Neil Patrick Harris game, which we'll talk a little bit about later, which was huge. This one, though, uh, the, ba the game itself was bad. It's, and it was components. Components were, were what really ruined this game. And because uh, you had to put these little pieces in the car, but it was re nearly impossible. If you played life, you know, putting the people in the car, putting the people in the car, this is nearly stinking impossible. They flop all over the place. They're all over the place. There's these teeny tiny little things. There's a million of them. They're nearly impossible to pop out. I kid you not. We only popped out enough so we could actually play the game because they were so hard to pop out. These will be sitting in thrift shops hundreds of years from now and people will still not have popped out all the little plastic pieces because they're just not good uh also there's a pop-o-matic with a spinner which in theory is really cool so you essentially pop it down like a do pop and then it pulls the dice and it moves the dice up and it was supposed to spin the life spinner because remember the life you spin the spinner it was supposed to do both at the same time it was genius but it didn't actually work so this one was very disappointing but it was still interesting it was an interesting failure and i think it was above gps no GPS is shorter. <laughs> All right, next we're going to go with Hitster. This is another really, really unique one. And I'm going to put this in the great category. I really enjoyed this game. But once again, I'm going to give you the caveat, like I did with the MTV Music game, that if you're not a big music fan, I think you're going to have a... You're not going to be the biggest fan of this game. Now, what was cool about this game, it was on Kickstarter. Pretty sure it got funded. I hope it got funded. I didn't actually check it out. Uh, <clears throat> was that... You, you actually would scan a QR code on the card, and it would play the music through Spotify. And I thought that was really unique, really cool concept. 
And so, yeah, I like that a good deal. So, and I would rather play it than the MTV game, but I don't think it's better than Kingswood. All right. Whew. Next we got Lost Ruins of Arnak. Let's talk about a big dog. One of the best, uh, going to be on a lot of top tens lists this year, and I thought it was great. I don't think it's my favorite game, like, of the year. Not even by a long shot. I thought it did everything really, really good. Like, that that, that was the best thing. I thought, like, everything in it was great, but it just... I don't know. Like, I'm not dogging on the game at all. I would totally play it on the drop of a hat. It was just... It didn't... It didn't do it for me like in Orleans. Orleans is one of my favorite games of all time. You know, like, one of those Euro games that just absolutely grips me, encapsulates me, keeps me up at night thinking, what could I possibly have done different to make the outcome of the game? Oh, on the sixth turn, when I purchased the blue peg, I should have secretly, you know, I should have, you know, little things like that. I love Euro games like that. They keep me up at night. Uh, and so I'm going to I'm gonna put it here above Hitster, below Kingswood, Fear of Bend, I like it better. Fear of Ben's not one that keeps me up at night, but because uh, that it's still on the lighter side, in my personal opinion. But still, great game. Next we have Zoro Dice Game, the expansion. Um, I like the Zoro Dice Game. I thought it was fun. I thought it was good. I'd rather play it than Marvel Villainous, Faza. The expansion itself just adds a little bit more, more variability. And it's, it's a fun little dice rolling game. Glass all by, yeah, you know what? I, I did actually like Zoro a little bit better. My kids really liked it. It's way shorter of the Chronicles of Crime. I liked it better than the Alpha. Better than the stories? Wow. That's more on the Zoro Dice game than necessarily the expansion, because the expansion just adds to it, kind of get grandfathered in like uh, Dominion does. Like, if I was just... If this was the only Dominion game, it might be a little bit lower, but just because of Dominion's name, it stays there, I think. All right, Herd Mentality. This was a really unique game. It goes up to 20 players, so it's going to stay in my collection forever. And it was... Uh, what were the rules on it? I think it was... Uh, it was... <laughs> it was... You were trying to think of the answer that everybody else was trying to have, and you were trying to have that answer. You know what? I can't put it in the great category if I can't remember it. That's just not fair. Can't do it. Got to bump it down to good, but it's near the top of good behind Don't Let It Die. Because if I can't remember how to play it, it can't be put in the great category. Got to respect the great. Box one, Neil Patrick Harris. This is a really interesting one. This is a solo escape room game exclusive to Target. Designed by Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, very odd. Uh, it was short. <clears throat> that was a big thing. Also, it was really hard for me. And, well, I thought it was a cool experience. I just, I don't know. It's a really hard... <laughs> it's the kind of thing where I say, if you have extra money, if you have the extra 30 bucks to spend to get it, and you don't mind using it, I would play it two players, to be honest with you, as like a date night type thing, or to play someone that you care, just to, you know, kind of find the secrets, because Neil Patrick Harris has inspirations with, with magic and escape rooms and different things like that, and they come through in this game, and it's a really cool experience, and it's good, and I, you know what, I am, I'm gonna bump it, I'm gonna bump it all the way to good, actually, the more I talk about it, the more I really wish I would have brought my wife along with me, but it says specifically, only for one player, ignore Neil Patrick Harris, listen to me, two players but yes it, it tells a, a a video story kind of through your device where i don't want to go too much into too many details but you end up watching like short video chats between people and it all becomes a very real thing and i like it a lot it's a really cool game i'm not gonna put it in the great but i think it's good i think if he does another one box two that's for two players that's bigger and mightier more than two hours People are going to go nuts for it. Try to get saliva out of spots where there's not saliva. Codezilla. So this is a... Uh, this is one. This is an educational game, which immediately goes into good range for me, where you have ice cream cones, and you're trying to put ice cream cones together to get certain numbers. You remember, you ever you just play like... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And, but the pieces are all ice cream cones, so you're trying to get your ice cream stack to get to a certain number or something like that. It almost goes in the forgettable, but because it's an educational game, I'm going to bump it into the good. I had a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you, and I'm going to put it up here. Above P for Pizza. I had a lot of fun playing with that with my kids. I really did. It's a great one. This is highly unprofessional, but I'm going to go grab some water. It will literally take me 12 seconds. I apologize profusely. Two of... Okay. Wowzers. 
I really thank you for bearing with me there. Woo! Not used to doing these long ones. All right. We have Burpin' Bobby. This is a children's game in which <laughs> it really has a cool gimmick. You know, a lot of these children's games boil down to a gimmick. This one is the one where you're, I don't remember what, exactly what you're doing. You're reaching into his mouth, and eventually what happens is he burps, and it, like, actually sprays out this <laughs> this green mist. <laughs> I guess I'll turn around now. Uh, and my son thought it was good, and I will bump it to good. I'd rather play it, yeah, I'd rather play it than Morocco's. I see you, villainous. You're about to get bumped down to meh. Can't do that. Can't do that. All right. Telstone's Queen's Gambit. This one is a very divisive game. This is a very divisive game. <laughs> Tom Vassell trashed on this one, if I recall correctly. I had one of the first views up. We liked it. We liked it. That's one of those games that I'm really glad I did a thoughts from the corner on it. Because, you know, if it's like, no, there's like three people up here saying that we like the game, it seems, because now everybody's like, oh, it's so bad. But it was like a simple memory game. With a little bit of bluffing, and I enjoyed it for what it was. I had fun with it. Uh, so many people will come for you if it just goes mad. Uh, I liked Telstone King's Gambit, and uh, every other reviewer be danged. I thought it was good, <clears throat> but was it Burp and Bobby good? <laughs> no, no, not that good, my friend. Put that on the box. All right, next we got Half Pint Heroes. This was a really interesting trick-taking game. Because the tricks would actually be different uh, amounts of cards. It was it's really kind of hard to explain. We did a Bauer, uh, we did we did a video on it. I thought it was great, and I would rather play it than a lot of these games. But not Christmas Rush. I love Christmas. <laughs> I love that. Christmas Rush is the gatekeeper. You will not enter the top ten. What is this? Two, four, six, eight. No, the top eleven. So that is the top eleven. Top, you will not enter the top 11 games. Not on Christmas Rush's watch. All right, next we got Cloud City, uh, which will definitely not be going up there. I, we would, this game was so heartless and generic and boring. And I'm going to go with meh. I'm not going to go with forgettable because it did have a cool gimmick. The gimmick was that the pieces were actually these plastic pieces, these plastic skyscrapers. And then the skyscrapers, you'd put these little uh, these little things on top of them, and you'd actually create this little city. But the game itself was so lifeless and boring, and it just it didn't do it for me. It was better than Smirkle. It was better than Buy the Vote. But no. It's exchange holding it down. Oh my goodness. Thank you for letting me get this water. I really do appreciate it. Oh, oh, uh, I must say that uh, YouTube has said, has reminded me I should mention Super Chat. So, Super Chat it up. I don't know what that is. <laughs> they said Super Chat is something I should mention in every live stream. I remember that part of the test. Uh, Lift Off Get Me Off This Planet is a great, very underrated family game. I'm going to start off by saying that. The original version of it went under the radar. It's spun by uh, Eduardo Braff. Ito, you should check out his review channel, Twenty First uh, Pencil First Games LLC. It's a great company, and, and, and this game just does not get enough love. I think it's a great game, and I would rather play it than a lot of other games. But essentially, it's about you having these aliens, and your goal is to get off this planet that is about to explode, and the only way you can get off the planet is go to these, uh, these different rocket ships on the outside of the planet, and different rocket ships trigger with different dice rolls and different things, but then, like, the moon is moving around the planet, so there's, it's a really cool thing, and you can manipulate time in it with certain things. It's a really enjoyable game, and they had a deluxe edition that came out this year. I think it's great. Highly recommend that one. All right. Moral Conflict, a.k.a. the $6 Target game. Uh, so this is part of a Target experiment I did where I bought a bunch of new Target games to see if I could make my money back on them. I did a Kickstarter video on, or a uh, behind-the-corner video on that. If you haven't checked it out, it's really kind of interesting. I made half my money back and gained 12 subscribers, in case you're wondering, uh, in one month. But this game itself was very meh. Well, it's hard. Here's the thing. It feels like a party game. It really does. Because essentially what it is, is they give you a social situation. Like, most likely to make out with your mom. Or something like that. And then everyone writes down on the card, who would be the most likely to do it? You reveal it, and that person gets a point. And then when someone gets, you know, ten points or whatever, whoever has the fewest amount of points, it's like the most morally good person. So it's essentially just, you know, point and laugh at the person who's maybe, you know, lower on the poverty scale, so their lives are a little more in turmoil. You know, if you really want to boil it down to it. But that being said, it's fun. It's a fun game, and the cards aren't all terrible. Sometimes they're like, most likely to, you know, not put the cat back on their toothpaste or something. Some of them are kind of lame. 
But overall, it was a fun game. Problem is, it's only three or four players, even though it's clearly meant to be, you know, up to an eight-player game. And the reason why they did that is because they made it $6 to target. So they made it as cheap as possible. And for that, I must give them a meh. Because despite the fact it is a good game, I will meh you, sir. But you will go to the top of the meh. If you have two copies of the game, I actually think you have a pretty fun game. I will say that. So 12 bucks. Droll. This is a really unique one. This is a good game. This is a good game. This was a, this what's going up here. So this was a game. I don't remember quite. It's almost in the forgettable, but I remember it because of the, the cool dice, and I kept it, actually. Kept it on my shelf because it was so different. You're actually going to draw on these big dice and then roll these dice, and, and it was like trying to figure out what people were drawing or something like that. I don't remember the specifics of it, but it was fun. It was, it was muffin time fun, but it was not pee for pizza fun. I enjoyed it. I do remember that. Next we have Ripoff. Another game I kept in my collection. Once again, just because it's an incredibly unique game. It just does something different. You know, a lot of times when you, people collect, like, video games, they'll collect really obscure games just because it's really obscure. I like to collect really obscure board games because they're so different. This one is one where you actually have the, these, these dollar bills that you rip up. <laughs> and uh, you're trying to cover a picture to, like, buy the, the thing on the picture. It's a Blue Orange game. But you're, it's just literally a paper-ripping game. And I'd love to see paper-ripping used as a bigger mechanism. You know, I think that could be a really cool potential mechanism in the future. Like a, like a heavy Euro with, like, paper-ripping. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. It was good. And I put it above Marvel Villainous. Because <laughs> rip it takes, like, four minutes. Uh, that being said, I, it, it, it's close to not being good. I think more, most people would rate it meh. I just can't bring myself to rip up components. LOL. No, no, no. They just get, like, the literally the only components in the game are, like, these small cards that have, like, pictures on them. And then, like, 200 of these dollar bills. Like, just paper money that you just rip up. They're, like, this big. It's a really intriguing game. All right. We're going to go with Sequoia. So I talked a little bit earlier about those three filler weight games from BoardGameTables.com. One was terrible. That one's down there. GPS. Sequoia was good. Sequoia was very good. It was fun. And... I feel like I'm becoming more of a lighter gamer. I mean, I'm, I'm really putting some light stuff here, some family weight stuff. But then again, that's to be expected. Both my kids are really starting to play a lot of games with me. And I would actually like to pick this game up. It was uh, area control with dice rolling. And essentially, it boiled down to kind of like a, a space space kind of thing. Where you roll dice and then you could decide where you're going to put your dice in an area control type aspect. And it was a cool game. I really enjoyed it. A good deal. I'll put it right there. I liked it that much. You know what? I really did like that game. All right, next we got Battleship in Space. This was one of my experiment games that I bought from Target. Uh, so what it does, and I can actually show it to you right now. Woo, yeah, you're in luck. Oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Oh, dear, you know. Oh, my gosh. Don't, yep. It's 3D. Look at that. Kind of cool. Uh, but the other thing is, you could put your ships on any one of the three, uh, the three layers, and uh, when you shoot someone, you actually shoot a laser. So if you you don't go to like B ten, you just say like I'm going to sector two, which would be row two ten, and then it just shoots a laser all the way through ten, which means you could potentially hit you know a whole bunch of different ships, and, and it's 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 good, it's good, it's fun. I like it. I like it, but not as much. Yeah, I like the classic stuff. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to slide it right below Pig Puzzle. It's a harder sell for me because it's two players, and the components the components ding it down a little bit. Yeah, I will say that, you know what? Actually, I'm going to bump it right down here. Components components were a little bit iffy on that one. They were kind of hard to get in because you have to reach all the way to the back, and they didn't go in perfectly. Next we got Kabam. Forgettable. Very forgettable game. Uh, I'm going to put it right here, though, in the forgettable scale. Because I remember enjoying it to a certain extent, but that kind of enjoyment, we're like, yeah, that was, that was okay. Let's never do that again. <laughs> That's how I felt about Kabam. It, it, you know, and it was, you're trying to match up different puzzle shapes. So you got like these shapes, it's got different colors, like, kind of like the front. So you'd be like, oh, now I can put purple on orange with this card, and you make the board in the middle, and, and I forget. Virtue Signal! A.K.A. Um, <laughs> the game, uh, all about making fun of the left wing. And it was a mad game for me. And it's not because of the theme. Because I do want to stress this here. that I thought the theme, 
actually was kind of funny. You know, I, I think if you if you can look at the left, and I'm I'm a far left political person, so but I think they make fun of a lot of the double standards and stuff like that. But in in the end, the gameplay itself wasn't that fun, and it was essentially just you're matching up colors to make like these different d- d- different things. It was kind of tile laying. Not tile, but like card laying, and there was special abilities and all sorts of stuff. And it was they tried to like do gamery stuff, but with it just didn't work for me. And I'm gonna put it under. You know what? No, no, I'm gonna put it right there above Smirkle. Take that, Smirkle. I would play rather play Virtue Signal than Smirkle. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me as a human being, but let's keep going. Uh, next, we got OMG LOL Remix. We so rockin' game. Shot of Bower Family learns of this. This is about. The absolutely uh, insane, uh, I guess it's a line of, it's not children's show, it's like dolls, card game. I don't know. They like open bags, it's a toy. They're very popular toys. Essentially a bunch of tweens putting on makeup and going on fashion shows and doing sorts of things like that. The game itself was actually really good. Almost great. (laughs) Oh man, am I really going to do this? I'm going to put in the great. I'm going to put in the great because here's the thing. It is all about making the kids the star of the show. They get up, they sing, they dance, they do silly things. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you're, well, then I bet your granddaughter would love this game. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good deal of fun. My, I, did, I shot a Bower Family Learns of it, and my kids had a blast. But it's one of those games that the sillier you get, and I got super silly right from the jump of the game, the sillier kids are going to get, and I thought it was a great kids game. So, Tidal Blades, you move out. Last Defense, I enjoyed it more than Last Defense. My son absolutely would not. Falling Skies, <clears throat> that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> LOL, OMG, sitting in my number 15 game of the year. <laughs> I think uh, <clears throat> I think R- Rondo also had that as his number 15 game as well, if I recall correctly. <laughs> All right, Back to the Future. This was a really stinking cool time travel game. Then I'm going to put in the great category. I thought it was a great... Mm, it's either great or top of the good. I'm going to go top of the good. I'm going to go top of the good. Back to the future. I really did enjoy the game. I felt like it did a great job of time traveling. So essentially, uh, you're traveling around and you're trying to avoid Biff and all throughout the times. And it, it did time travel really well. And I played it with my seven-year-old. He enjoyed it a good deal. I'll put it like this. If you're this purely as a family weight game, um, my... Uh, I would put it in the great category. But if you're playing it with adults, I think it just... It was good, but it wasn't great for me, personally. All right. Next, we got Good Cop, Bad Cop Promoted, which is the legacy-esque... Uh, I, I'm going to say campaigns, less legacy. I don't want to get people excited. Campaign-esque expansion to Good Cop, Bad Cop, which is one of my uh, top 20 games of all time. I still think it is in there. Uh... And it is an amazing social deduction game that's now had three or four expansions. This one adds a, uh, the campaign variant to it. 3.4 on BGG. <laughs> uh, this adds a campaign variant to it, and it was good. Was it great? Yeah, I think it's bottom of the great. Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I played this with my son, actually, and he had a blast. I think this was the the one where we actually did a Bower Family Learns, but Lucy was in it, Tool, which was cool to have about, uh, Lucy do a Bower Family Learns. Uh, I don't think it was Falling Skies great, but it was it was great. I really did enjoy that one. I'm excited. I'm going to be excited to revisit that every single time I do it. All right, <clears throat> what is this? The Silver River. Uh, this one was good. This one was very good. This one's going towards the top of the good. Maybe great. Yeah, I think it's around Tidal Blades. I think it's around Tidal Blades for me. And like I said, Tile Blades, I thought it was great, and other people thought it was good. I think uh, Silver River, I think it might be flipped a little bit. Um, but that was a, a pretty epic Space 4X game that I really did enjoy. It was missing something. I don't. I couldn't put my finger on it. There was a little bit of an it factor. I enjoyed it as a solo game a good deal. But put that one right there. But I think I like Tile Blades better, personally. But still a great game. All right, Piece of Pie. This one's Blue Orange Games. You had to construct a pie with different fruit toppings, and it was forgettable. I don't remember much about the game at all. I don't remember disliking the game. I think we did a Bower Family Learns on it. I liked it better than Lucky Luau. <clears throat> I think it's Aunt Atticus Attic and that are neck and neck. I really do think. <laughs> all right. Next we got The Liberation of Wrightburg. I thought this was good. Play this with my son. He had a good. He would put this in the great category. I would put this in the good category.
I don't remember anything about the game. Not one single thing. I remember it was cooperative. I can't put it meh, and I can't put it forgettable. Because, you know what? I can, because of my son. <clears throat> ah, am I doing it? Am I doing it? Yeah, it's forgettable. You're right. You're right, Grant. It's forgettable. I don't remember anything about it. But I remember it was fun. I remember it was fun. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go bottom of good. But still above your villainous. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Johnny Skull. Johnny Skull. Then the, the something something or other. This, this is solo kids laser shooting game where you have to turn out the lights. And there's this pirate ship that projects um, images all over the floor and all over the ceiling and everything, and you're shooting this magic wand at them. It doesn't actually shoot a laser, but you shoot it at the pictures on the wall, and then eventually you try and beat the pirates. And it was it was, it was meh. It was not good. Uh, it's not forgettable because it was so weird, but it wasn't a good game. You know, but it was like two minutes, so I'm going to put it towards the top of meh. And it was fun to sit around in the dark and hear the sounds. Yeah, I'll put it there. But it, it was the kind of one where my four-year-old got the chance to play it. And I was like, or, well, he was a four at the time. Now he's five. Because he would definitely correct me. And, and I was like, hey, buddy, you want to play that again? And he was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> normally he's chomping at the bits to play everything. So that, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I think, I think it's in the mech category. Uh, Baron Voodoo. Oh, my goodness, no. No, 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 no. Uh, oof. It's, I don't know if I'm going to go, uh, I didn't like the game. I really did not like the game. And it's one of those games, and I, I shot the review on this. We played it twice. I think I did a gameplay video of it, too, with my son, maybe. No, 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 I didn't. We didn't end up shooting the gameplay video because the rules were so confusing about something. And that's what it was a big issue. The rules really bugged me. And I did not end up liking the game uh, partially because of that. And I played it twice. And we did a, We also did a Bauer Family. Uh, yeah, we did a... Um, we did a thoughts from the corner on it. We were very negative on it, if I recall correctly. People were like, man. <laughs> you know, I remember we got some blowback for that. Which you always do. Whenever you do a negative review, you get blowback. But I'll tell you what. A lot of people will say it. I know John Games recently said it. They said, you know, I don't do, I don't do reviews that often. Or I, don't, I don't think he does anymore now. Uh, because, and he didn't do bad reviews because he just didn't have enjoyment doing reviews of bad games. And I do. <laughs> I love shooting reviews for bad games. I I absolutely love it. I don't... I, I'm, I, I'm a bizarre person. All right. Next, we got this game. What the heck was the name of that? Oh, The Few and the Curse. This is based off a comic book. This is a good game. I would almost put it in the great game for me, but it is very fidgety and long. And if I recall correctly, it was a deck-building game. It's not forgettable. But next year it'll be forgettable, which means it goes to the forgettable category. Top of the forgettable. Very top. It was good. It was almost good enough that I'd keep it. But at the same time, like, I, I just, I, it's one of those games that I never want to go back to the rule booklet. And every single time I play that game ever again, I'm going to have to go back to the rule booklet and so I'm never going to get want to go back to that because I've got so many other games that I don't have to go back to the rule booklet for. And unless you got a Rodney video, you know, I'm going to put in the forgettable because I, I'm, I'm preemptive. That's 2021 technically forgettable, but I'm going to do 2020 forgettable now. A game that's not forgettable. In fact, so much that I haven't played this game in like five years <laughs> is Flapjack Flipout, which I'm going to put right slap dab... In the middle of the good. <laughs> because I feel like this is a little bit of an odd one. I played this as a prototype five years ago at Gen Con. I actually shot uh, a YouTube video after playing it and trying it out. Uh, I shot an interview at Gen Con because I interview everybody at Gen Con. <laughs> everybody. I interview the freaking janitor if they want to talk. I don't care. Um, I interview everybody. And, and so I check it out and now it's a real game. I look at the game I'm like, oh, that looks really sick and cool. I remember having a good time with it. It's all about flipping pancakes. It's a speed game. I liked it a lot. Put it in the good category. Love to check it out again. Okay, let's get one of the big dogs. Make room, make room, make room, make room. Blood on the Clock Tower is my favorite game of the year right now, and potentially, period. It is absolutely outstanding. Yes, I know technically it's not out yet. I don't care. It's a 2020, and this is my last! It is... Uh, Werewolf is one of my favorite games of all time. I love GMing Werewolf. I love running. I love being in games with Werewolf. It is one of my all-time favorite games, partially because of its simplicity. Blood on the Clock Tower, however, is a refinement and a perfection of that basic formula, in my personal opinion. And it is a uh, late-night 
social deduction game that people are going to be playing for decades to come. Guarantee it. It's that good. No questions about it. So much fun. Me and Adam stayed up way, 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 way too late at Origins last year playing this. We probably played like eight games of it. And so what we did last year at Origins was we literally just played games all stinking day and then we shot impression videos on those games. But then we'd play Blood on the Clock Tower for like four hours at night. And it's just, oh, it's so good. You got to check it out if you like social deduction games. Next, we got Knife Tank. This is a really interesting flicking game from a yo-yo person. <laughs> I don't remember his name. But he was like, hey, I'm big in the yo-yo world. I made a game. Would you like to check it out? And I was like, yes. It's a knife flicking game. You try and flick knives across the table, but there's these little cards. They're knife tanks. It's cool. It's good. It's kind of forgettable, but it's it's different enough that I won't put it in the forgettable. It's above ripoff. It's honestly a game that if it was in a larger box, it probably wouldn't stay in my collection because I have a lot of other better flicking games. And when I really talk about this out loud, there's like three other smaller flicking games that I would rather play than this game. So why am I even keeping it? Because I'm a hoarder. Let's move on. Next, we got Nevada City. <laughs> This is a really fun game that I don't remember. I played it once. It was really good. It was borderline great. But if I can't remember that much about it, I'm going to put it in the, the slap dab in the good. I'll put it above Dominion. I'd rather take the time. But not above Muffin Time. Nah, yeah, it was that good. Ugh, I don't want to see it. Here's the thing. I don't remember that much, but I'm going to put it right there. Uh, I will say my buddy Adam, who does Thoughts from the Corner with me a lot of times, he would put it in the great. He absolutely enjoyed that game. And quite honestly, this probably should be in the great category. But I only got a chance to play it once, and I don't remember that much about it. Which tells me, you know, maybe you're just good. Maybe. Next we got uh, The 100 Tori. This is a game about uh, creating a garden in Japan. Very popular theme lately. I don't... Uh, not my particular cup of tea theme, but the game was good. It was fun. I did a solo video on it. And I played it once with the game group, and we enjoyed it. I don't think it would ever get played again. And so I will slap it right here. Because I'd rather play Maracas. <laughs> Next we got Villainous. It's the expansion. Every time there's an expansion, my game group, one of my game groups is, is hyped to play it. It was good. It was better than the Villainous one. <laughs> it was better than the Villainous one. Because the Villainous one was a little bit... And I'm not just trolling Villainous this time. I have been trolling Villainous this whole time. But this time I actually say the expansion to Villainous I enjoyed more because it added more characters that I could play in that game. And I at least like to always play a different character. Whereas in the Marvel Villainous, it doesn't play well with the other versions of Villainous. So you have less characters to pick from. So I will... You know what? <laughs> Forget you. I'm putting it there. No, I won't do that. Alright. What do we got? Frankie... Dice Rollin' Vegas. This is a really oddly themed game about what if Frankenstein went to Las Vegas and played in dice games, and I don't know. The theme is stupid, but it's a good, fun family game. It's a good, fun family dice rolling game that was better than Incoherent Family. It was better than Dominion Menagerie. I'd rather play because it, it was short. It was sweet. I really enjoyed this. It was, uh, I really did enjoy this game, but I'm not going to put it above Conezilla. Okay. Whew. Okay, Kingdom Rush. This was a cooperative game. I did a Kickstarter video for it. Was cool. It was a tower defense game. I don't remember much about it. But then again, the part of the reason why I don't remember much about it is because I don't I don't keep the prototypes after I'm done with them. I think maybe I shipped it off to somebody else with this one, and so I didn't really get to play it after that. But it released and it was good, and so I'll slap it here. Uh, somewhere in the middle, realistically, I think it'd probably go right... You know what? No, I thought it was pretty dang good. Realistically, I think it'd probably go right about there. I really enjoyed that one. Really did enjoy that one. All right, next! Uh, oh, I hate this one. It pains me to even do this one. We have Adventure Games, the Volcanic Island. And I need to shoot a review on this. I really need to get to it. I've been putting it off because I don't want to do it because it's going to be a negative review because this is a bad game in my personal opinion. And that hurts me to say it. And oh, is it below Valhalla Llamas? Yes! No! <laughs> oh! <sighs> the reason why I'm so disappointed in this game is because I played the original Adventure Games The Dungeon. I played it with my seven-year-old son, and we had an absolutely amazing, incredible time that we will talk about for years and years to come. It essentially is a choose-your-own-adventure-style game where you're going around and you're exploring a different area, trying to figure out the mystery and escape or do whatever. It interweaves story, and it has a great app, 
and I absolutely adored playing it with my son. And so when they said, we have another one, we have the Volcanic Island, come check it out, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, part two. I imagine <clears throat> they have learned from some of their mistakes, because there were definitely flaws in the original one. And they've made three now. There are definitely flaws in them. But so I was like, hopefully they've improved, they've made things better, they've made things... Uh, you know what, it's not fair to put this right here. I'm going to put this... Uh, it's You know what, it's an award winner. It's my most disappointing game of the year. We're going to put it there. That is, without a doubt, my most disappointing game of the year because it ticks me off because it could have been so much fun and they could have learned from a lot of the, the mistakes. But instead, the game was worse. We got to about two-thirds through the game and we just got completely stuck. Like, numerous hours of time were invested trying to figure out how to get ourselves unstuck and we could not get ourselves unstuck. That's how stuck we were. I have played quite literally thousands upon thousands of board games. And when a board game quite literally does not let me finish, I don't like that. That being said, it still is cool. It's cool. It's a cool concept. It's really neat. I would highly recommend checking them out. They're like 20 something dollars. They're really cool games. Get the dungeon one. All right. Dig, dog, dig. Children's game. Go around trying to find dog's bones or something like that. It was fun. It was good. I don't remember much about it. <laughs> um, I need to play it again. I'll put it right here. Not below. I'm going to put it... Yeah, my four-year-old really liked it. I'm going to put it right there. <clears throat> right there. I think it's about right. Is your cup big enough? LOL. Apparently not. My throat is really drying. Oh, what do we got next? We got D picks. D stands for dick. Yes, dick picks. I review everything on this channel. Got the far right game here, got the D-Pix game here, and this one was better than the far right game. D-Pix was a, a really interesting game where it had you, uh, it had really good artwork. I remember that. The artwork was very funny. It was one of those games that when I got done with it, I wanted to look through all the cards. It's very adult, inappropriate, obviously, game, so you need to know that going into it. But we had fun, and it was all about telling stories from your life, and then sometimes it'd be like you would be lying about a story, trying to trick people into believing, so you'd be putting in all these details. And it was a good enough game. I think it would have been better with a bigger crowd, and I think it's the kind of thing that would go over better, probably not with board gamers. I'll put it right here above Nevada City. <laughs> I think I think that's probably going to be where most people slot Nevada City and Dick Picks in the uh, the grand scheme of the top games of 2020. <laughs> I think that's 48 and 49 right there. All right, next we got Exit the Enchanted Forest. So it's it's way better than the other Exit. I did this with my buddy Adam. Cool format here for it. Thank you. Uh, I thought it would work well for these games and slotting them. And plus, I'll be able to take a picture at the end and say, "Hey, here's my top ranked games. You're my number seven game of 2020." I think that'll be neat. I thought this one was good. Towards the bottom of good. And actually, you know what? The meme is over. I would rather play Villainous than Exit the Enchanted Forest again. Here's my thing. Exit games... <laughs> yeah, the Enchanted Forest. I still... <laughs> the Exit game series are the, ga the type of games like Chronicles of Crime where everyone else at the table, I feel like, is having more fun than me. Well, I still have a good time. And I still enjoy the puzzles. And this one was kind of neat because at the end, there's these little things you can make. I'm not trying to spoil anything, but there's things you can make and keep at the end of these little cardboard cutout things that you fold. And the puzzles are okay, but the story is just bland. The story is... It, it, it never dives into anything. Like, it references a bunch of fairy tale things, but it never really, it never really made the theme come across at all. And it had a bunch of those... Ugh, I hate this. I hate this. I'm, I'm leaning more towards meh. You know what? I'm going to go with meh. Now that I think about it. Because it had, it had a bunch of them where it essentially is one person doing something and then someone else just being like, can I take a look at that when you're done? Like, and I, and I don't like those. I like the escape room and the exit room games where everybody's doing something, where we got different things, and this one did not do that. I'm going to put it in the mech category. Maybe exit games are not for me. Who knows? But Bye Bye Mr. Fox is for me. Uh, it was a good family game that falls into the forgettable category, but I'm not going to put it in the forgettable category because we played it like three times. Yeah, very hit or miss. I would agree on the escape room and the exit games. I'm going to put it towards the end of the exit. I would still rather play it than Villainous, though. But I would rather go back and explore Riotburg. <clears throat> Alright, Cards Against Humanity, the family edition. We're going all the way up to the grade here. I will say 
both my kids nearly peed their pants laughing so hard at Cards Against Humanity Family Edition. And I know you're saying Cards Against Humanity Family Edition. I'm pretty sure that's apples to apples. And I say, no, good sir or madam. That is not the case. They have found the middle ground. So this is essentially PG-13 apples to apples. So there's like uh, mom's big butt or like, you know, eating santa's nose hair or something like that like they push the boundaries to the point where you're like eh, but they never go that you know like if you have kids and sometimes you're watching movies and you don't remember the movies and then they get to like scenes of the movies you're like whoa oh oh are they gonna are they gonna be like oh okay they didn't they didn't do that uh, like that's kind of what this game feels like and everyone had a blast it is a lot of stinking fun it is a great family weight game and it's one of my favorite family weight games of the year i think it's gonna move over christmas rush Move over Pandemic. Move over all us Roots of Arnak. Uh, a racist bigot for playing Cards Against Humanity. Yep. Yep. That's uh, probably somebody that was uh, getting made fun of in Virtue Signal right down there. Because unfortunately people will do that. <clears throat> I'm going to put it above Kingswood. Uh, oh, how high does this go? How high can it go? Yes, Cards Against Humanity <laughs> Family Edition is my number four game of the year. Because... Okay, there's one reason why. And, and it's actually... Oh, I cleaned it up. But it's right over there. I don't know if I could... I, yeah, I'm not going to move it. But it was my son, today, sitting down here while I was working. And I was like, hey, what's up, buddy? And I was trying to get some stuff done. I was really working on some thumbnails. And he was just like, oh, I'm just coming to hang out. And what he ended up doing was he ended up sitting in this, this black chair right here. <laughs> and he just sat there for about 15 minutes, going through the Cards Against Humanity cards, reading them out loud... And giggling nonstop to himself. And then when he got done, he said, Hey, Dad, can we play Cards Against Humanity soon? And I was like, said, I said, yeah, sure, buddy. We can do that, buddy. Um, so, yeah. For me, if you got kids between the age of four plus, as long as you know that it's PG-13, you got to know for your own family. This is not apples to apples here. So know that going in. But if you've got the risque kids... They're going to have a blast with that. A lot of fun. All right. Now we got Slam Cup. This was a Blue Orange game that was a gimmick game. It was all about trying to get cups. It's forgettable. And I remember I ran into like the scenario that almost felt like it was broken because there was a wonky rule, but it wasn't broken. The rule was just wonky. And I don't remember what that rule was, so I'm going to put it forgettable, but I did like it better than Piece of Pie. And, but not better than Anna the No. Not better than Anna the Addict. <clears throat> All right. Woo. Last few. Here we go. Here we go. Zen Tiles. Zen Tiles is a really interesting game. So as a therapeutic experience, Zen Tiles is a great experience. It would go into the top ten. Because essentially what it is, is it, it causes you to look back at your day from yesterday and try and self-analyze your emotions. And so it gives you a bunch of these emotions, and you think about your day yesterday, and it says during yesterday when did you feel loved or when did you feel excited when did you feel bored and you try and pinpoint the point in that day that you felt the most of that emotion and then what you do is over time you would play the game you know numerous times you might say you know what around the middle of the day i'm really getting you know down in the dumps or i'm really getting angry and you start to really self-analyze yourself and dang it i'm talking myself into great because i'm keeping this game uh, I did a I did a solo gameplay of this, and I really came to some strong conclusions about uh, how I needed to be running my life, <laughs> and you know that that deserves to go above LOL OMG Remix We So Rockin' Game. I do believe <laughs> so, but not above Liftoff. But but it's still a great game as a as a multiplayer game. It's not as good. It, it's 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 you know what? Ah, I'm gonna bump it higher. I'm going to put it right there, because I feel like... Because it's a multiplayer game, it actually got me and my friend Brandon and his roommate Matt talking about just a, a mutual friend and talking about our history and our emotions and things we've gone through in life, and it all came because of the game. And i got to keep going higher, because I love when a game can do that. I love when a game can really do something unique. And this caused me to analyze how I, I treat my kids and I treat my wife and I treat myself and how I handle my business. And if a game can do that, it deserves to go higher than the law. Yeah, but not Kingswood. One of the best children's games I've ever played. You know what? 
I'm doing that too. I'm doing that too. Yeah, the more I think about Zentiles, it's just, it's such a unique experience. Highly recommend checking that one out, especially if, if yeah, just for everybody. I think, I, I think if the entire world played that once a week, the world would be a better place because it really makes you stop and think about your day yesterday and really analyze it. Uh, the, uh, this one is a weird one. So this is HH Castle, the Haunted Castle. This was a Kickstarter about you trying to escape from not Sherlock Holmes or something. It's, it's Sherlock Holmes, but it's not a Sherlock Holmes game. I don't know. I played it solo. It was fun enough. I haven't got it to the table yet. But part of the reason why I haven't got it to the table yet is because I really am not excited to get it to the table. Which means, let's be realistic, that means it's meh. I'd rather play Moral Conflict <laughs> with three or four people, I guess. But that one does have the potential, I think, to rise to good. I think there's a glass ceiling right about Nevada City. There's no way I think I can put a murder castle above Nevada City, in case you're wondering. Secret Naked Bard game? Secret Neighbor, not Secret Nader. I don't even know. It's hard to talk now. I'm going through this water, and I gotta pee. Save the Dragon! This one is an interesting one. This is a really cool game where you're going to drop a dragon, this ball, through the top, and then it rolls down these stairs and can potentially knock your meeples open. It had big, chunky meeples. It should have been a slam dunk from Blue Arch Games. It really should have. But it's not. Because <clears throat> assembling the thing was super difficult. I did an unboxing of this, and I decided to assemble it. And I think the unboxing was about 15 minutes of me just getting frustrated trying to assemble the dang thing and partially breaking some of the pieces. Not like fully breaking them, but you know what I'm talking about? Where like there's flaps and you have to put them in the right spot, but then they kind of get bent. And they're like, oh, they're not completely broken off, but they're still kind of bent. They're not perfect. Just do, that's my piece because you got to do it gingerly. Like maybe you have a game like that. Imagine if the whole board was like that. It's cool. It's a cool gimmick game, but assembling the gimmick was not good. And I think it's because they used a 3D rendering of what they what the game was going to look like instead of actually having a picture of it. I don't know how to explain it. It just was... It was not the best. And while I did enjoy the game, I felt like if I took it... If I unassembled it... You know what? I'm going to put it at the bottom of good. Because my kids absolutely loved it. It is a cool, unique game. It's fun to watch the ball roll down. But I don't think it's going to be in my collection in five years. <sighs> Which would be an interesting one. I could go back through this and say if I thought something was going to be in there in nine, uh, five years. All right, what do we got next? This is Red Light, Green Light. This was another one of those Target games I did as part of an experiment. It's really simple. I played it with my four-year-old. We did a power frame. We learned something. And if I recall correctly, he actually stormed out after the first turn. He didn't, He wanted to go first. And then on his first one, he got like a red light. And then he was just like, out. He just left. He went upstairs, and he was like, I'm not playing. He didn't say a word, if I recall correctly. And me and Sean just had to finish the game, because we're shooting. Um... But that being said, it was it's okay. It's good. It's a good children's game. It was... I enjoyed it better than Burp and Bobby, I think. And I enjoyed it better than Faza. And Meeple Land. But not Chronicles of Crime. You know, and, and with that, I'm looking at the scope of a four-year-old playing it with a three- or four-year-old. Very young kids can play that game. Uh, because the, a lot of them know the red light, green light game. They play it in daycare, childcare, whatever. So I put it there. It's fun. Time of Legends Destiny, all the way to the top. So here's the question. Is it better than Blood on the Clock Tower? If you don't know about Time of Legends Destiny, that's because this is one of my cheat ones. It technically says it came out in 2020, but it got pushed back to 2021. But uh, I love the game so much and I want to talk about it right now. Because it essentially is a one to three player interactive role playing experience where it's set in a role playing game world. So essentially there's a world that's created for you and it has a heavy integration with both tile laying and laying out these big tiles that you explore that turn into like cities and app integration. And the app integration is spectacular. It tells you a story, and you can pick up items, and you can you can test things out. Like, so you can try and throw something across a bar. You can try and threaten the bartender. You can do all sorts of crazy things. And it's a really... But the game itself is very structured. It's a cool, structured game. And playing the game is... So it's three one to three players, and each player is going to play as a different person that's living inside this, this kind of living, breathing world. It's going to have real-life events that will, you know, have different actions. And maybe you go out exploring into a different part of this world, and you find a side quest, uh, something different that might help you. It's just... 
everybody's got different objectives. It's absolutely fascinating. But in the end, this is so hard. Because Blood on the Clock Tower is such a different beast, but they're both absolutely outstanding games. They're both games that I guarantee you I will have for the rest of my life. And Destiny's has got to have like six boxes or something absurd, and I want every single one of those boxes. I don't normally do that when I do Kickstarters. Uh, part of the thing is like, oh, I'd like to have a copy of the game when it comes out. But, no, you know, if they don't send it to me, I normally don't. I don't like Whatever. I got tons of games. This is one of those games where, like, as soon as they're shipping, I'll be like, hey, I, I did the video. Can I can I get the whale? Can I get a whale, potentially? <laughs> because I absolutely... I want to I wanna play every single inch of this game. But I still think Blood on the Clock Tower just gives me... It's split in hairs, but I'm going to go Blood on the Clock Tower. I love Social Deduction a little bit more. But they're both absolutely spectacular games. And I think Destiny's is going to go down as a lot of people's favorite game of 2021. Uh, I'm calling it right now. It's outstanding. Check it out. And Mountain Goats. Last one. Also, another great one. I, this, so I talked about the three, um, the three, what was it, filler weight games. The amount of times I've been told, if you cover this for us now, we'll send you on release and nothing ever arrives. Yes, it is true. It is true. I will say they have so many different balls that are spinning in the air. I've ran Kickstarter, so I understand. But yes, it is kind of crummy. Uh, but Mountain Goats is not crummy. It is a spectacular filler weight game where essentially you're race. It's a racing game where you're racing these mountains, these goats up the mountain. And when you get up to the mountains, it's kind of like darts where, uh, you can try and just score a whole bunch of points and then people have to try and knock you back down and they knock you back down the mountain. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic filler weight game. This is the one with the goat meeples and it's great. It is absolutely great. If you're going to get one of those three games, highly recommend mountain goats. Absolutely love it. I want to add it in my collection. Is there a fainting goat module? Uh, unfortunately not. And I will put mountain goats. I can't put it above Gloomhaven though. And I can't put it above Kingswood. I'm going to put it right there in front of Fiera Ben. So there you go. Those are my top spell of the awards. The awards for the most disappointing goes to adventure games. Thanks for nothing. Best game of the year, Blood on the Clock Tower. Most underrated game of the year. I don't hear anybody talking about. This one's a hard one to do. Because the games come out throughout the different points of the year. But I'd say the most underrated game... <clears throat> I want to say Cross Clues, but a lot of people are coming to Cross Clues. Fear of Bend. Fear of Bend is a really unique experience I think people are really, really going to like. Worst game of the year, Valhalla's absolutely atrocious worst components of the year goes to the game of life and trouble and the most heartless game of the year goes to animix but those have been my top 93 board games slash card games of 2020 if you enjoy this list whoo please be sure to click that subscribe button down below and as always thanks for your time youtube Woo! oh wait now i need to click end the stream that's a thing that's a thing people do goodbye